Okay, in part B of our motion of charged particles in electric fields videos, we're going to basically apply what we've just talked about in terms of potential difference and acceleration to analyse the motion of a charged particle in an electric field. And we're going to use, um, as we've done in the classroom, or we'll do in the classroom if you haven't already, the Teltron tube as an example to show that. Um, obviously it can be used in lots and lots and lots of other scenarios as well. So let's look at the motion of, in this case, an electron in a constant electric field. And um, some of you have seen this in the lab, and for the other guys who haven't, I'll um, show it to you when we catch up. Um, what we have in the diagram here is a Teltron tube, um, which is what we use in the lab to look at the motion of an electric field. It has at the back a cathode ray tube, so this is the sort of tube that used to be in the back of the old cathode ray tube TVs. And this screen here is called a phosphor screen um, and basically when an electron strikes that screen it lights up and glows as in the diagram below so we can see the path of the electrons in that screen. Um, the way your old TVs used to work is they had um, cathode ray tubes at the back of them and they would fire them at the screen and that screen would basically when the electrons hit that screen it would cause it to glow and depending on where that electron beam was directed, different colour pixels would glow and give you the different colours that make up your screen image. Um, I won't go into the detail there because it's not relevant, but if you are interested, it is a very interesting thing to look at or ask me more about. So, what do we have here in the back? Um, firstly, there's a filament. This is down here in this part where that light is. And that just is a filament like a light bulb that gets hot and it gives us a source for free electrons. When it gets hot, the electrons sort of bounce to the surface. And then that, at this end of the tube, we have a positively charged plate. Usually in the lab, we're using about 3,000 volts using a high voltage power supply. And the electrons get basically attracted to that plate and there's a very thin slit which lets some of the electrons go flying through that plate. So this is basically a way of making an electron gun. Now we can work out what the velocity of those electrons is initially and it's in this case their horizontal velocity because we know that the um, work done is equal to delta V times Q and we know the charge on an electron and we know the voltage that's applied here to accelerate it and that is going to be turned into the kinetic energy of that electron and the kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared so we can do a bit of algebra we know the energy is the work done we know the mass we can then work out the velocity of those electrons as they get fired. And that's like our horizontal velocity in the same way we talk about horizontal velocity with projectile motion. We can then work out what the acceleration is here and that acceleration is in the vertical direction because as we just derived on the previous slide, the acceleration is equal to E times Q on M. Um, so we can then work out the acceleration. Then, in the same way with projectile motion, we can look at changes in vertical and horizontal components. We can work out time of flight. We can work out uh, the vertical deflection. Um, all of that same sort of thing that we did in the previous topic, we can apply to analyse the motion of a charged particle, normally an electron, in a constant electric field. Um, so, in the next slide, I'll go through an example problem from an old exam, but that just gives you a bit of an overview of how we can do this, I guess, in the lab and in the classroom. Um, and obviously, this type of physics can get applied to lots and lots and lots of situations. When we look at the cyclotron, we'll apply it to there in conjunction with what we know on magnetic fields, but there is numerous applications this can get applied to. So let's look at an example problem. This is an old previous exam question. 
Um, hopefully you can read this. I can't really make the font much bigger easily. An electron is fired horizontally into a uniform electric field in the vacuum between two oppositely charged parallel conducting plates as shown in the diagram below. The electron enters the field halfway between the plates with a speed of 2.1 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. The plates are 0.15 meters long and the uniform electric field has a magnitude of 4.00 times 10 to the 3, so 4,000 volts per meter. They've used that unit. You could also use the uh, Newton's per coulomb. It's exactly equivalent. Ignore the effects of gravity. Um, so in this case, I've just talked about before, they've given us this initial horizontal velocity. We could if we wanted to and we were masochists, work backwards from that velocity and work out what was the voltage that they were um, accelerated with using what I just showed you on the previous slide. So if, if you'd like to do that, I'd encourage you to do that, work out you know, how many volts it was used, but obviously I don't think it's part of this question. So what is this question asking? show the time of flight of the electron through the uniform electric field is 7.14 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. Once again, it's a part A, so it's a show that, so that if you can't work this out, you can still do previous parts of the question. Um, so time of flight can be, in this case, worked out because we know the horizontal velocity, and we probably should be writing this information down. So we know the horizontal velocity is equal to 2.10 times 10 to the 7 metres per second. And we know that the horizontal displacement, is, which is the length of the place, is 0 0.150 metres. So we know that um, oh, VH equals... SH times T, or if we used it as the range formula, SH equals VH times T, doesn't really matter, but to get that to a time, we go, um, sorry, SH over VH, just a simple algebra rearrangement, which gives us 0 0.150 divided by 2.10 times 10 to the uh, times 10 to the 7 and so I'll jump up here that is equal to if you put that in your calculator 7.14 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds um, sometimes the beam will hit the plates um, However, I think this question tells us the electron enters halfway with the plates. Um, I think we can imply from this question, um, and we're going to show that later on as well, that this beam won't hit the plate, so it, it will travel through that whole distance. Um, Secondly, show the magnitude of the vertical acceleration in, of an electron in the region between the plates is that. Um, once again, we know the formula acceleration equals EQ on M. Um, we can either easily derive that if we don't remember that. I think that formula is on the formula sheet, but it might not be. But I showed you on the previous slide how to um, derive that. Actually, I've got a feeling it's not on the formula sheet. And I would say it's one that's worth remembering. Even though it's easy to derive, you do use it quite a bit. So we know the electric field strength is equal to 4.00 times 10 to the 3. We know that the charge on an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That's not given in the question, but it is given on the data sheet for the charge of an electron. And we know the mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Once again, that's on your formula sheet. They've done a show that, which is good because it is easy to make a mistake with um, so many... Um, 
exponential numbers and that sort of thing. And if we all plug that into our calculator, we hopefully get 7.03 times 10 to the 14 meters per second per second because it's an acceleration. So, hopefully that shows those first two parts were reasonably straightforward. The final part, calculate the vertical displacement of the electron as it leaves the fuel, give your answer to the nearest millimetre. So there's going to need to be a unit conversion at the end to get that millimetre. So basically, oh, I was about to write up here on the diagram what we were trying to show, but they've already labelled that for us, the vertical displacement. So what will be the vertical displacement? Well, let's think. What's the initial vertical velocity of that electron beam and hopefully you said zero because initially it's moving in a horizontal direction and doesn't have a velocity. We know that the acceleration in the vertical direction is 7.03 times 10 to the 14 because we just calculated that but even if we didn't calculate that it was given to us so we could still hopefully have a go at this part of the question. And we know the time at that point is equal to 2.10 times 10 to the 7. Oh, sorry, that was the velocity. Just go undo, undo. Sometimes I leave these mistakes out to save time, but I think I've got plenty of time in this video, so... I will leave my correction in because I think sometimes seeing people make mistakes and fix them is a good way to learn. So, if we think in projectile motion terms again, the we go back to our formula and we look at our formula sheet and we go, mm, if we know all that, which formula will let us work out the vertical displacement, so S for displacement, and hopefully we get see that we have this formula, which I'll just write in terms of the verticals, equals V, 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 0 times T, and that's all going to equal 0, cancel out, plus a half A, T squared. That's equal to 0, so I'm just going to cross that out now, not worry about that part. So that is equal to a half times 7.03 times 10 to the 14 times by the time which is 7.14 times 10 to the minus 9 and that is squared just to make it a little bit difficult for us so I will just pause and plug that all into the calculator so plug that all in and I get 0 0.0179. Now that's in metres. Asks us to convert that to millimetres. So we times by a thousand to convert metres to millimetres. One. Yeah, one meter equals a thousand millimeters so you've times by a thousand and we get 17.9 I think we've got three significant figures everywhere yep so I'll keep that at 17.9 and not go to 18 17.9 millimeters so there's an example problem on the motion of electrons in an electric field that's it for this subtopic thank you